Hey guys, welcome back to the Arter server. So today's video is somewhat of an unexpected video. I accidentally discovered something and I thought it was kind of interesting, so I wanted to share it with you guys. All right, so we're looking at my the Flash system, which is the system that I use to flash all the HP cards that you guys uh, find in my store. And this is an older uh, Xeon uh, Westmere uh, system, and I use this system because it has a lot of PCIe slots and allows me to uh, process a lot of HBA cards simultaneously. So anyway, I also test some of the processors that I sell in my store in the system and I was testing a batch of processors and accidentally did something that I didn't think would actually work and I didn't know I was doing it so I did it anyway and it worked and it was just kind of strange uh, and unexpected and kind of contrary to what I've learned in the past. And so I just want to share this with you. All right, so over here, I have two processors. This one is an e, a Xeon E5630. This is a four core, eight thread CPU. And over here is, it's a Xeon L5640 CPU. And this is a six core, a 12 thread CPU. This is actually one of my favorite CPUs for this generation of machine because uh, it's one of the lower powered ones. And, and really, if you needed more compute power, I'd highly recommend you just upgrade to a newer, more modern platform. Um, the Westmere generation is kind of getting really old and not as energy efficient when it comes to um, high performance compute. But it's still, you know, somewhat usable. Uh, it's it's fine for a home lab or a starter lab. They're very, very affordable platforms these days. But okay, so this is a six core, 12 thread, 60 watt TDP CPU. And this is a four core, eight thread, 80 watt TDP CPU. And they don't even support the, main, the same uh, memory speeds. This supports up to 1333, this does not. And I accidentally put them both in the system and they booted up and it seems to kind of work. So I just wanted to kind of show you that today. Uh, let me set the camera up. I'm going to go ahead and install these CPUs again and we'll boot it up and I'll show you kind of what I discovered and, um, and we'll, we'll check out a few other things too. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to start with removing the socket covers. Get those out of the way. All right, so the first processor is this guy right here. So that is the L5640. And I'm going to put that in the first socket. All right, and so here's the second processor. All right, so this is the E5630. I'm gonna put that in the second socket. All right, so let's get some CPU coolers on here. I've been using these uh, graphite sheets for the, uh, I guess, in replacement of uh, thermal paste, just because um, they don't require any cleanup and I just reuse them so I don't waste a lot of thermal paste just testing stuff out. All right, let's buckle these down. And 
plug in the power. All right, so I'm gonna get on the virtual console and uh, we'll boot this guy up and show you what it looks like with these two different processors in the system. All right, guys, I'm logged into the IPMI interface here. And so let's go ahead and power this machine on. Over here, I have the uh, virtual console app open. So first thing I'm gonna do, I wanna enter into the BIOS menu and just kind of take a look at uh, what the computer thinks it sees. All right, let me go ahead and just minimize this. I don't think I have a way to make the screen any bigger, but I'll, I'll try to maybe um, magnify it in post. But uh, yeah, so you can see in the middle, it says that uh, the CPU is an L5640. We know only one of them is the L5640. And clock speed is 2.26 gigahertz. So that's correct for the L5640. And physical count is two. So it does detect that there are two CPUs in there. And the logical count is 20, so that's kind of interesting. So remember the L5640 is a six core 12 thread and the E5630 is a four core eight thread. So if you add the eight and the 12, you get the 20. So it's detecting the number of cores correctly. Uh, one thing I wanna check, I don't know if there is a um, place where I can see this. Okay, so current memory um, frequency you'll see is 1066. So normally, if it's just the L5640, which supports 1333 megahertz memory speeds, and the modules, the, the DIM modules in there support that, and normally, um, if it wasn't in this configuration, it would um, boot up with 1333 megahertz. So it's taking the 1066, which is the maximum supported frequency, uh, memory frequency for the E5630. So it seems like it's taking the lowest common denominator between the L5640 and the E5630 in that case. Uh, QPI, they both support the same QPI speed, so uh, that seems to be okay. Um, I guess I have I don't know if I want to try this, but I have a way to force it to 1333 if I wanted to, but I think I'll kind of leave that alone. I, I just, let's boot up the system and see um, what the OS sees in this. Okay, so while that is booting up, I'm going to launch a couple of terminals which I'll use to um, connect to the machine once it's fully booted up. Okay, so let me just get the IP address out of this thing. So it's at 224. All right, let me go ahead and minimize this. Let's SSH into that machine. Logged into three places. So. Um, first thing I just want to see top, it's showing, uh, zero to 19. So it's seeing 20 cores. Let's actually run LS, uh, CPU here. Okay. So this is interesting. Uh, LS CPU says, okay, we have 20 CPUs online, which is the 12 plus eight, uh, online CPU zero through 19, uh, threads per cores two. Cores per socket says it's five. So I think it's just doing some math there. It's not really detecting it because um, it's not five cores per socket. It's uh, six and, and four. Uh, two sockets, so that looks correct. Uh, it's seeing it as an L5640, so it doesn't uh, really see the other 
um, the other uh, processor or it's not recognizing it, although the core count is, you know, um, off. Uh, yeah, all right, so then let's, let's see what uh, INXI sees. So INXI um, CPU and memory. Okay, so yeah, so here are the two uh, memory modules here, the eight gig module here on the first socket, uh, eight gig module on the second socket. Um, as we saw earlier in the BIOS running at 1066 instead of 1333. So that's kind of interesting. Um, CPU, it's identifying as two six cores, which we know that's not true. Uh, L5640. Um, okay, so this is interesting right here. So it's, this is identifying the kind of the features of the CPUs. Uh, so multi-threading, multi-core processor, uh, that's true. But it says AMP, I think it's asymmetrical multiprocessing. So uh, yeah, this is definitely not symmetrical multiprocessing. So if you have two of the same processors, this is usually says SMP. Uh, so Linux somehow is recognizing that this is not a symmetric multiprocessing setup, um, but it only sees the L5640 and not the E5630. So that's kind of interesting. I've never had a system where, you know, we had a mixture of two different processors. So this is the first time I'm seeing this. And normally this would say SMP, um, but it is very um, appropriately saying AMP right now. And I didn't, I didn't realize um, it would do that. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, speed is minimum 1.6 to 2.26. So I think that is the base frequency of the L5640. The base frequency of the E5630 is actually higher. So it seems like it's taking the lowest common denominator of, um, you know what, let's, let's look at the... Um, I think I can look at, yeah, so I can see the, the core frequencies here. Let me, you know, let me run this. Uh, let me kind of blow that up just a little bit there. Okay. So here we can see all the, uh, the core frequencies for the 20 cores that we have here, or the, or the 20 threads really, right? Let's run a um, let's run the CPU benchmark on these 20 cores or 20 threads and see if um, what the frequencies are here. All right, so let's do a sysbench run. Um, I'm going to do 20 threads. Let's just uh, I think was it time 60. Let's just run it for a minute. CPU run. All right, let's see. Okay, so we are loading up all. 10 threads and CPU frequencies are maxing out at 2.26 at 2.26 gigahertz. So, uh, so it's in a way it's underclocking the E5630. All right, so benchmark is done and the CPU clocks are back down to 1.6 gigahertz uh, in most cases here. Yeah, so anyway, I just thought this was kind of interesting. I didn't realize uh, that you could do this, that this was actually possible. Honestly, I my understanding was that if you had two different processors that it just you know wouldn't work, it wouldn't post. Um, I think that's the case uh, for the more modern systems. Um, I'm pretty sure for Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, I've... Um, mistakenly mixed up different processors and basically the system just wouldn't boot. Uh, in this case, it seems like it's possible. Now, I don't know if this is maybe particular to super, this is a super micro motherboard. So, uh, you know, maybe um, this doesn't work on all um, systems of this generation. I don't know. So I, actually, you know, I know a lot of you guys have an R710 out there or maybe some other uh, older servers of this generation. Uh, just kind of curious if you have a couple different CPUs lying around uh, for 
that system um you know maybe give it a try and let me know uh, leave a comment down below and let, let me know uh how it, how it went and, you know if it worked or if it didn't work this is kind of um a little unexpected for me and so i just thought it was kind of interesting and wanted to share this with you guys uh i'm actually kind of surprised that in inxi it actually um identifies this as AMP, I um, mean, asymmetric multiprocessing. So, you know, there's some, there's some logic in there that was designed to recognize this type of situation, uh, which, you know, I thought would be pretty rare. Um, so it's just interesting that at least that utility seems to recognize that. And I'm just, you know, still surprised that uh, it sees 20 threads that the 12 plus eight uh, you know, that's really interesting. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're new to this channel and you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my videos. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I'll leave a link down in the video description. I've got the best selection of pre-flashed IT mode HPA SAS controllers for your true NAS, ZFS, or Unraid server builds. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.